YouTubeson, we have a problem. It's 2023, but now we travel to space. We have microchips and quantum computers and even AI by now. And still, if I go into a store and get myself a warm beer like this one, there is no way for me to cool it down fast. Like, how is that possible? We still have to rely on old tricks like, well, tricks like putting it in the freezer or in cold salt water, and then we still have to wait for hours. I find that unacceptable. And by the end of this video, I will hopefully have changed that. Now, the requirements on this one were pretty straightforward. It was supposed to work fast, that's the whole idea. Uh, it was supposed to be easily cleanable. It should work reliably in turning liquids from about 18 degrees Celsius down to 8 degrees Celsius. And, you know, it should be ready to use at pretty much all times. On top of that, I also wanted it to contain little to no electronics because they tend to make things messy and complicated. Um, the best thing I could come up with, at least, was to build a flow cooler using some tubing, like this one, and cool packs. For the first test, I used some regular propylene glycol ice packs that were at negative 18 degrees Celsius. I put three of them in series and ran a tube through them. The input water was at about 19.7 degrees Celsius and came out at about 18.4 degrees Celsius, quite the delta. Running the same water through the setup a few more times gave me some nice data that I could use for a, well, very crappy regression. Factoring in that the tube was hardly touching the cooling pack at all times, I and mean, there were quite some gaps, and doing a little bit of math, I figured that I would need a tube that was about five and a half meters long, which is about four more times than this. Crap. To make this thing practical, the device cannot be taller than 40 centimeters, otherwise it would hardly fit in a freezer. HT pipes or PVC drain pipes, as they are called in the US, have either a diameter of five centimeters or seven and a half. Now on a pipe with a diameter of 5 cm, the longest spirally arranged tube I could fit is 3.5 meters, but we need 5.5, so no win. But on a pipe with a diameter of 7.5 cm, I could fit the required tubing and would only need to be about 35 cm in length. Nice. The first design that I came up with was this. Around about five and a half meter long tube fixed in a spiral position. Uh, again, the spiral itself is then contained within an HT pipe, and that HT pipe is filled up with propylene glycol, the blue stuff that you know from cooling packs. The product itself will sit in the deep freezer all day, and whenever I need it, I just bust it out and pour my liquid through it that I need cooled down, and it will come down the bottom, hopefully nice and cold. All was prepared, I had this thing right here and it was time to put it to the test. I just got it out of the freezer, it's been in there for about 24 hours and is really really cold. The camera woman is laughing a lot. Probing the water and comfortably at about 20 degrees. Now let's see if we can change that. I totally don't see this sitting in my freezer all night long, all day long. Okay, oh, it's running through. Does it make it to the end is the question. I am kind of worried that it froze in the tube. No, please don't. Don't do this to me. Yeah, that works poorly. Uh, to figure out just how much I screwed up, I decided to pour some vodka through it. And before you say anything, I know, I know, vodka has a different heat capacity and it cools much faster than water does and the viscosity becomes very thick and blah blah blah. But it helped me to get some sort of idea about how much I screwed up. And 
man was I off. It cooled down the vodka to more than 10, minus 10 degrees Celsius, which is way below the freezing temperature of zero degrees and way below the target temperature of eight degrees. Crap. Being a bit smarter now, I'll build a second version. Okay, let's take a second to talk about what this propylene glycol stuff actually is. Now, whenever I'm talking about propylene glycol, I'm actually talking about this stuff right here. This, however, isn't just propylene glycol. It is also water and something called natrium carboxymethylcellulose, or let's just call it blah blah. While well, water is pretty harmless, the propylene glycol is used to lower the freezing temperature and is actually used in foods. And the blah blah is used as a thickener also in foods. Now you might think that this makes this stuff harmless, but as one guy on Reddit put it, <clears throat> just one gram of blah blah will clear out your insides and ours. So best not to eat it. Four point four degrees. Fucking A. <laughs> this thing works. Awesome. Get a day someday, right? Yeah, it's cold water that tastes like vodka. Oh. Oh. Cheap vodka. <clears throat> Yeah, that worked a whole lot better. Um, I mean, considering that I now had two versions that where the second one did quite a bit better, I was able to <laughs> now make some proper regressions to figure out just how long the tube should be uh, to get somewhere in the target curve uh, in terms of uh, cooling capacity. And also, I cracked open one of the prototypes to see if the propylene glycol somehow reacted with a 3D printed PLA to see if you know I could use more 3D printed parts, which luckily at least didn't soften anything and that was is to me a good enough indication to say well fuck it it won't react uh, screw it <laughs> sorry and that's, based on that I went to work to create the third and final version now all of this work brings us right here it's Friday in the evening I just sent out the last email to my current client which makes this the perfect point in time to have a nice little after work drink now we kind of have a choice to make here what I have is some Riesling, which is good and will definitely work, but we also have some beer as well proposed in the introduction of this video. Now this is going to be a little bit exciting. The problem is that beer is still a little bit glitchy with this thing. You have to understand that what happens is as I pour the beer through the device, uh, it tends to bubble up and those bubbles freeze quite rapidly and that is that's just not good Still what I did is I created one more iteration Using a bigger hose which obviously and changed quite a few of the dimensions again Which meant reprinting which also meant doing some bit more science and calculations and stuff But anyway, we're just going to try it out now this beer here is a Alsterwasser that sits at well, what does it say actually? 18 and a half degrees. By the way, it's called Alsterwasser. Don't let any other German tell you something else. Alsterwasser is... Yeah. Alsterwasser is beer mixed with Sprite, in case you don't know it, it tastes amazing. It's a good, light summer drink. And the reason why I said don't let any other German tell you differently is because some Germans will probably tell you that it's actually called a Gabla or cyclist, I guess, you would try and directly translate it. The thing is that, well, I'm a Norseman and the people from the north call it Alsterwasser. Now, this is the hopefully final version. Uh, the tube here now has a 9mm diameter to compensate for the freezing bit. In length it's like about 32 centimeters, so quite compact. Up here there's a little bit of a funnel. There's two kinds of uh, rubber uh, on the inside, or two layers of rubber, to make sure that none of the ethylene glycol gets out. And also all the welding spots, I kind of use the 3D pen, the 3D doodling thing to close it up. 
Now let's see if we can pour this thing and get ourselves a nice cold beer. Oh yeah, looks good. But you can see by the stuttering that there is still quite a bit of freezing going on inside that thing. And... <laughs> and it's frozen. <laughs> oh, it's dripping. Let's see if we can get a little bit more. Now, while that is dripping, let's take a look at the temperatures. Uh, where's the thing? Here, there you go. And we have... What's that? Seven. 7.4 degrees. <laughs> let, me, let me see, hopefully it's possible to see it in the camera. Uh, awesome. Now I would just have to figure out how to stop <laughs> bubbles from freezing up the coil, but I'll take any one I can get. It's at least by now a nice cold sip of beer. Oh, good stuff. All right, and that's that. Oh. Now calling this a 75% win. I mean, wine works, beer uh, works a little bit, and cocktails also work. Basically everything that's carbonated is just a little bit of an issue. Now do you have some ideas on how to make this better? One also with a propylene glycol uh, as the basis, and another one working with thermoelectrics, but we'll probably get to that in a future video. Until then, check out one of my other videos, subscribe to the channel, and um, see you next time. Bye.